So let's quickly start with the prescribing pathways or fovel seizures. So you've got first line treatment or second line treatment. First line is lamotrigine or levetiracetam. Second line is carbamazepine, oxcarbazepine and zonisamide. A good way of remembering the first line treatment for lamotrigine and levetiracetam. Well, they're the two L's, right? So sometimes you've got to take two L's in life to get you focused. That's a quick saying that I like to uh, people to use to remember that. For carbamazepine, oxacarbazepine, and zonisamide, um, if you take the first letter of all three of those drugs, it's cos, which is like, you know, because, um, and you might ask, why do we need second line treatment for focal seizures? Cos, we do. Why wouldn't we? And that's carbamazepine, oxacarbazepine, and zonisamide. Going on to generalized seizures. So we've got tonic clonic seizures myoclonic seizures, atonic and tonic seizures. I have got two variations of absent seizures. So the first line, uh, the top line is absent seizures when it's just absent seizures on its own. Uh, a patient can literally just have absent seizures, no other types of seizures. The second line, and I've put a blue asterisk to explain it as well, is if a patient has, let's say for example, they've got absent seizures, but they've also got tonic clonic seizures or if they've got absent seizures and they've also got atonic seizures like um it's just not absent seizures on its own so for all of them apart from the top line of absent seizures uh, absent seizures on its own we use sodium valproate as a first line treatment and then we use either lamotrigine or levetiracetam as second line treatment i've underlined how absent seizures on its own is different um, for first line treatment, we use ethosuximide. For second line treatment, we will we'll use sodium valproate. When it comes to women um, that are of childbearing potential currently or in the future, uh, we don't want to use sodium valproate. We we know that sodium valproate is the most teratogenic anti-epileptic. So for those um, who are of childbearing potential at the moment or in the future, we will use the second line treatment. So we'll skip sodium valproate. We wouldn't skip it for absent seizures on its own. So first line for absent seizures on its own will still be ethosuximide. But for all the others, we just jump to lamotrigine or levetiracetam. Status epilepticus. So that's a seizure lasting longer than five minutes and we immediately need to provide resuscitation and emergency treatment. A patient might have an emergency management plan in place, uh, they might not. The standard for um, status epilepticus treatment is if it lasts longer than five minutes, sorry, if it lasts, lasts longer than five minutes, and let's say for example, um, they're in a community area. So they might be in a pharmacy, they might be in a care home, somewhere where there's no resuscitation facilities immediately available. So if they're in community, we would give either buccal, midazolam or rectal diazepam. If they're in uh, an area where uh, resuscitation is available immediately, then we would give IV lorazepam. Let's say five to ten, 10 minutes goes past the first dose of uh, whatever we've given, whether it's IV lorazepam or buccal midazolam, we would give a second dose. If the seizure fails to respond to that, um, after two benzodiazepam doses, we would give levetiracetam, phenytoin, or sodium valproate. Now, let's say if the seizure fails to respond after that, we'd try another second line. So we'd try another one out of levetiracetam, phenytoin, or sodium valproate. And if still not responding to that, we'd give phenobarbital or general anesthesia. Cool. Going on to the actual anti-epileptic drugs. So you've got three categories. Now, what these categories describe is the level of accuracy you need to basically dispense this medication at and the impact that not prescribing the correct brand will do to the patient. Okay, so you've got three levels category one, category two, category three. 
And category one always is obviously the most severe category to be in. So for these drugs, carbamazepine, phenobarbital, phenytoin, and primidine, it has to be the exact same brand throughout the whole, the whole treatment of that patient. So that's the C and the three Ps. They need to maintain the same brand. And then like you get a little less strict. So category two, um, you maintain specific brands basically on pros versus con, on clinical judgment. Um, that includes a whole list of drugs, which I'm not gonna read out. Um, and then category three, it's unnecessary to keep the patient on the same brand. So like it's your normal general drugs like ethosoxamide, gabapentin, pregabalin, levetiracetam. I'm sure you see like those are always in your unbranded section in a dispensary um, if you divide into brands. Um, so the main one you should focus on is category one. Like make sure you know all of the category ones. Um, and then if you've got time, just go over some of category two or three. But yeah, how I remember it is the C and the three Ps. So yeah, that's that.